Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. And in this video, I will discuss carbon dioxide removal or CDR methods. As I've mentioned in many other videos, right now we are undergoing abrupt climate change. Nations around the world need to declare a climate change emergency as soon as possible. It's not sufficient just to slash fossil fuel emissions. I consider that leg one of the metaphorical climate system bar stool. We also need to deploy leg two, which is solar radiation management techniques to specifically cool the Arctic, to maintain sea ice and snow cover, to avoid very dire uh, extreme weather events and threats to the global food supply. We also need to deploy leg three, which is carbon dioxide removal, which is what I'll discuss in this video. So basically the CDR part is, um, let me just move it here, center it. Okay, so the CDR part is a lot of these techniques here. So how do we remove CO2 from the atmosphere and or the ocean. If we remove it from the atmosphere, then it also comes out of the ocean and vice versa. So one question is, is it easier to take it out of the air or is it easier to take it out of the ocean? Well, one way of taking it out of the ocean, for example, is to apply the limiting nutrient of iron in regions of the ocean where there's no phytoplankton. And that iron uh, limiting is a limiting factor in phytoplankton growth. So phytoplankton need sunlight, they need nutrients um, like iron, which they normally get from upwelling, and they also need uh, CO2, which are lots of. So this is converting, this would be removing CO2 from the ocean. It would go into the, the biomass, into the phytoplankton, go through the food chain, eventually deposit into the deep ocean. Another method is to just uh, grow trees, either reforest uh, vast regions with trees or afforestation. Um, we're growing trees where they weren't before. Uh, we're losing loads of trees around the world due to stress. Uh, in, for example, in California, I've seen uh, numbers as high as 40 million, 65 million trees being, um, being dying basically from severe drought, from pests, etc. Greening deserts, for example, would be creating loads of plant mass, extracting carbon from the atmosphere. Of course, we know that plants, uh, as part of their daily cycle, they absorb CO2 and convert the carbon into plant matter and they produce oxygen. So, so this is a very good method. If we can increase the plant biomass on the planet, we can extract lots of CO2 from the atmosphere. If we use mechanical means like direct air capture or bioenergy with carbon capture and storage, we can get, or, or we have industrial processes where there's concentrated CO2 that would have gone into the atmosphere. If we pump it deep into the ground or into the ocean, I don't like the ocean version particularly, but if we pump it deep into rocks, then it will eventually be converted to crystalline form. And this process was sought to take hundreds to thousands of years. A recent experiment um, in Iceland has actually found that lots of the CO2 that goes into basalt is converted into the crystalline rock form in the space of two years. This is very exciting research. Some of the other, this is sort of a flow chart of showing what happened. So if we um, sustainably grow plants terrestrial and marine, we can capture the energy, we get biomass. Um, if we undergo pyrolysis to this material, that's, that's heating it up in the absence of oxygen, we can form biochar, which then can, can then go into the, eco, into the soils and restore the soils. The carbon is caught in this material for a long time. We, we, we undergo sustainable practices, for example, where the timber, for example, can go into buildings and things um, there, we can directly capture uh, carbon from the seawater. 
Uh, if we end up with compressed air, we get we can get this or compressed CO2 from whatever, whether it be fossil fuel processes or whatever process it is, then we need to sequester this, um, as I mentioned, into geological formations or, you know, both um, under the ground or even um, at the bottom of the sea or under the sea floor. So this is an overall viewpoint. And um, this is just showing some other uh, possible ways. I've got the biochar, afforestation here, iron fertilization. You can have art, we can have artificial upwelling of nutrients to stimulate phytoplankton blooms, which will then capture carbon. We can have direct uh, CO2 air capture and store it in the ground or deep, uh, you know, at the sea, at the bottom of the seafloor where it would be, um, it would be a liquid because um, of the high pressure and low temperature. So there's basically all of those techniques. So what I want to draw your attention to is the National Academies Press has this uh, two PDF documents. One is on solar radiation management, and this one is on um, carbon dioxide removal and reliable sequestration, climate intervention. This is a very recent uh, document. I believe it's from 2015. It's put together by the um, National Research Council. It was commissioned by the US government. So let's have a look at some of these things um, in this document. It, this document is free to download, so I'd recommend that you have a good look at it. And what I'll do is uh, sort of summarize some things in here. So let me uh, just look at some different pages here. Okay, um, of course, we have a big problem. I don't need to talk a lot about that in this particular video, but the signs of a warming planet are all around us. We have a very serious problem here. And if we can extract the CO2 from the atmosphere, atmosphere and or oceans, we can go a long way to addressing this problem as, as part of the three-pronged approach. So there's a lot of uh, different things in here, and I will just sort of point out some of the key things. So uh, basically, we need to decarbonize the energy system. This is like one of the bar stool. Um, and then C CDR is, now they do a lot of comparison of CDR to SRM and they say CDR shouldn't be lumped in with SRM, which is correct. They also say it's a lot better than SRM. I disagree. We need both technologies. Um, but they do talk about, they do talk in detail about grow, just growing more forests and reducing uh, clear cutting of forests to ca capture lots of carbon. Sequestration of carbon in agricultural processes, for example, in the soils via biochar, um, land, accelerated weathering. There's minerals like olivine, for example, that are very reactive and weather very, very quickly. So if we can accelerate weathering methods, which are generally long term, and cap put the CO2 into minerals, then this would be a, a, a huge um, plot positive for re removing CO2 from the atmosphere. That's why the Iceland experiment it did this in two years, which is very, very unexpected, and it's a, it's 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 perhaps a great breakthrough. Uh, bioenergy with carbon capture and sequestration, or carbon capture and storage, um, is a, it's assumed in the last IPCC report that we do BECs in order to remove CO2 from the atmosphere, in order to reach those scenarios that they talk about like where we can maintain a maximum rise of two degrees or one and a half degrees. Probably not possible. It's not possible by any one technique. But if we treat this climate situation as an emergency, which will happen, it's just a matter of time, sooner the better, um, then this is going to be a very important technique. And then there's direct air capture machines, sort of artificial trees, you know, and then what do we do with that carbon? What's the price on carbon? So let's have a look, uh, let's continue on in this document. So, you know, one of the things that, you know, it, a lot of this is consumption of goods and services. You know, uh, the desire for improved well-being, we need conservation, less consumption, we need efficiency and improved technologies in the way that we use energy, low carbon energy, that's going to renewables, get off fossil fuels completely, cut these emissions down basically, but we also need carbon capture to remove the CO2 levels in the atmosphere, 
um, CDR removal, and, and this is possible, I'm saying this is definitely required too, SRM, leg two of the bar stool. Um, we need to do these things on an emergency basis in order to remain on this planet with any sort of decent life. Carbon dioxide removal, so they go into the history. Um, in 1896, Arrhenius said that human influence on the climate system might become noticeable over the next millennium. In less than 120 years, human activities have resulted in, we've released nearly 2 trillion tons of CO2. And now uh, we have urgent concern about climate change and blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. You know, it goes on. So I just wanted to point that out. Now, this, there's a table here. Uh, which shows the sources and sinks in the Earth's carbon cycle. So big sources, fossil fuel combustion, cement production, uh, deforestation, uh, sort of on about half the level. So huge total. We're putting, you know, on average 33.7 uh, gigatons of CO2 per year into the atmosphere. Now the sinks, we have the atmosphere, a lot goes into the atmosphere, a lot goes into the ocean. Um, as the oceans warm and stratify, less and less go in, into the ocean, We're, so then more will go into these other things. Terrestrial biosphere, lots goes in there. As we get more forest fires destroying the forest, as we get the coral reefs dying, etc., you know, less plant life, less animal life, you know, these sinks are all going to reduce and then the We'll go, we're going to go shoot right up in terms of, of, of CO2 in the atmosphere and oceans. We cannot allow this to continue. It's, it's insane. It's madness. Um, changes in atmospheric concentration, the total, 112, this was back in 2011, it's higher than that now, that's ppm, about 2 ppm per year on average, well, that's also way out to lunch, uh, we've had over 3, we had 3.05 in 2015, this year it's going to be more like 4 is where it's heading, so we're, uh, we must be getting very, very, very weakening sinks, and this is very, very serious. So let's have uh, another look at some more uh, information. Like I say, th this report you can go through. This just shows, I won't go into this, but this shows the carbon, um, the global carbon cycle. It shows how much carbon dioxide, how much car carbon, whatever form is in different parts. So how much is in the atmosphere, how much is in the oceans, in the land, you know, and also the dynamic exchanges between them. So here's the fossil fuel reserve. So we've been taking all this carbon and we're putting into into the atmosphere ocean system. And of course, you know, it's disrupted everything. Okay, this just shows some, um, some, some methods, carbon capture and storage. You take the carbon dioxide, you separate it out of the exhaust, and then you enhance you you do what you do things with it you can sequester it um, this is direct air capture and storage you take the co2 from the atmosphere and you store it or use it and so it's not so it's taken out of the atmosphere ocean system and this is the bex by so you have biological you get growth of something like switchgrass you know you burn it you capture the co2 and then you go through this process and remove the co2 from the system Okay, um, there's a couple other things here. No, let me uh, let me go to the next one. It's easier typing in the numbers here. So biochar, like I mentioned, it goes into the soils and so on. Um, and then there's uh, you, so there and then there's weathering. Um, there, there's all kinds of different ways. The the whole all these techniques. Uh, so you can, you can, um, I highly recommend, let's go back up. I highly recommend that you just Google this document, download it. I think you have to provide an email and then you can download it. Um, and, uh, also look at the solar radiation management because these methods are absolutely vital to stabilizing the climate system. So please, uh, Educate yourself, have a look at some of these tech techniques, because like I said, as we move forward, these will become vital for stabilizing our climate system. Thank you.